Well, good morning and welcome to the Morning Report. The morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. We really appreciate you being here on this Thursday morning. It is a little chilly. Chilly? Can I use the word chilly? Uh, un unseasonably cool um, here in the uh, Sunshine State. I, in West Central Florida, there was a cold front that went through uh, two nights ago. Early morning, it was like 47 degrees when we woke up. <sighs> but um, the temperature yesterday soared into the upper 70s. Uh, so we're looking for the same thing that happened today. I know some people, y'all also have snow on the ground. And that kind of sucks for y'all. But anyway, let's get let's get started. Um, there is, we're going to talk about Congress. We're going to talk a little, bit about, a, a little bit about Trump and abortion uh, today. Uh, Chairman Comer ends the House Oversight Committee hearing with a special announcement is the headline from townhall.com. Now, this has to do with all this impeachment inquiry stuff. You know my thoughts on impeachment. Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm looking for my co-host. Um, this idea, and, and a lot of us said it early when, when the Democrats tried to impeach or impeach Donald Trump, not only once, but twice. Once when he was out of office. How this was that impeachment should be used for incredibly serious crimes, um, not as a political tool to throw uh, the president off the track, and then not as a tool for retribution. It's it's our thought that if. President Trump gets reelected somehow in November, that the first thing the Democrats will do will, will be to try to impeach him. The very first thing they do. Because now we have degraded what impeachment is. Just like we've, as, as, as a culture, have degraded what racism is. We've de degraded what misogyny is. Uh, now we have microaggressions. That means that if I think in the back of my head, that you saying good morning is now somehow racist or misogynist or transphobic. So we've downgraded everything. We've, we've degraded everything. Uh, and we've degraded, unfortunately, really important stuff like, you know, impeachment. Think about it. Nixon didn't even get impeached. Come on now. Come on now. So this continuous use of impeachment will be will will be problematical go, going forward until calmer, cooler, smarter heads prevail. Yesterday, the House Oversight Committee held a hearing on influence peddling, uh, examining Joe Biden's abuse of public office. Although he has been invited to attend and had even asked a pu public for a pu for a public hearing, Hunter Biden was a no show. Of course, there's no way they're going to let Hunter Biden go and testify under oath. It's not going to happen. His lack of presence was noted throughout the hearing, including by key witness Tony Poblinski, uh, one of his former business partners. While Chairman James Comer, who's a Republican from Kentucky, decided to invite yet another Biden member to come before the committee at a future date. This time, President Joe Biden himself. This is this is a power play. It's not. You know, because what they know is that they're never going to get the president to come and sit, sit in their sit in their community uh, under oath uh, and be under oath and ask answer questions. It's never going to happen. That's why this is just some sort of stupid power play. To the end of the hearing, Comer summarized how Boblinski and Jason Galanis, also a former business partner, had provided testimony directly implicating directly implicating President Biden and his family influence peddling schemes. Comer addressed how Joe Biden is the person left who can swear away the discrepancies in Hunter's testimony versus Poblinski's testimony and Galanis' testimony. As he reminded, the witnesses have not changed their testimony. 
Uh, just as he had raised in his opening statement, Comer brought up now Biden is either complicit or incompetent, noting the American people deserve to know which one it is, but of course, neither is acceptable as for the leader of the United States. The ranking member, Jamie Raskin, a Democrat from uh, Maryland, also asked if uh, former and futurely future, excuse me, potentially future President Trump would be invited to come to talk about his violations of the Ammonia Clause. You see, this, this continuous tit for tat thing that has nothing to do with, I don't know, running the country in a responsible manner, um, protecting people's individual rights. If you wondered what Congress was there to do, Congress uh, at the federal level uh, is there to protect people's individual rights and to ensure that that happens. They're there to make sure that the country gets defended. They don't really have many tasks beyond that. I mean, and, and this right here is definitely this thing that, that they've been doing since Trump got elected. They definitely don't have any business doing this stuff. Neither, neither side. Yeah, that's hard to swallow sometimes, especially if you're a staunch Trump fan. And what or what happens is that you want to get them back that they got you. And we're just going to trade punches as if that somehow is going to save the nation. That's going to save the republic. Basically, it's just is just delaying the inevitable. Anyway, um, not to be outdone, Representative Jared, Jared Makowitz, a Democrat from my home state, later posted that, that Trump would be invite that he would be inviting um, President Trump to come uh, and testify as well uh, in a repost from Comer. The congressman posted he wished for Trump to come to, quote, explain why his family received tens of millions of dollars from foreign countries with his assistance. Mokowitz is the same dude uh, to come to the hearing in a Putin mask, accusing Republicans of relying on Russian misinformation. So he says, I just... I just came to thank James Comer for allowing all of our intelligence and, and using it in the committee, he said in a Putin mask. This is this is not moving the nation forward in, in any real way. Uh, this is not protecting uh, our, our personal freedoms. This is not making sure that our country's borders are protected, uh, that we are protecting ourselves against you know enemies, foreign and domestic. This is not. It's not. It's not representing the people of anybody's district. It's not. It's, these, these are two parties that are involved in these power plays. That's what this is. So de anyway, Democrats during and before Wednesday's hearing have been complaining about uh, Jared Kushner, who is Trump's son-in-law. But as we've covered, um, and and as we read in the in, into the record during Wednesday's hearing, the contrast is stark between Kushner and Hunter Biden. They are not the same dude. As far as we know, Kish, Kushner has not said something like, I probably snorted more Parmesan cheese than anybody in the world, right? Not the same situation. So it wasn't long before the White House responded, kind of. Ian Sams, the White House counsel, re reposted on CNN, uh, reposted CNN reporters and Agrair about Comer's uh, announcement, in part with an LOL and an emoji. He also claimed that witnesses have testified that the president did nothing wrong and that records he'd received have refuted the false allegations. Well, that's not really that's not really true either. It's not really true either, Mr. Sams. Now, here's the bitter pill. Nothing's going to happen. This wet dream of Biden and Obama and Bill and Hillary, Hillary Clinton in, a, in orange jumpsuits getting frog marched off the federal prison is not going to happen. Not going to happen. So we better find something else. Better find something else to save the Republic. This isn't it. 
Yes, sir. All right. I, I, again, in this continuing uh, theme that I'm presenting this morning, uh, the House Freedom Caucus has reportedly voted to remove Representative Ken Buck from the Freedom Caucus, which is not really a thing. It's just a group of uh, of Congress creditors that happen to agree on most things and happen to support former president, maybe potentially future President Trump. That's who the Freedom Caucus is. Freedom Caucus is has not had really no other reason to be to be named or exist other than other than that. Uh, but they're going, but they're going to get rid of Ken Buck uh, because he's a he's a Colorado Republican. Now, what what do we know about Colorado Republicans and New York Republicans and California Republicans? What do we know about them? They are Republicans with a small R. They have to be to get elected. The New Jersey Republican is not like the Texas or Florida Republican. They're not. But we but that was baked into the cake. We know that. Uh, even even President Trump is probably a small R Republican. Ooh, I said that. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm gonna title this, this episode. Trump is a small R Republican. And he's not a capital C conservative. He is not. And that, that does not negate what has happened to him and continues to happen to him at all. What happened to President Trump and what continues to happen to President Trump is criminal. Absolutely criminal. You, you hear what I'm saying? But let's, let's not get it twisted. Trump is a small R Republican and a small C conservative. And I want to prove it with the next story. Anyway, back to Ken Buck. So according to one Free Freedom Caucus member, the lawmaker has has not been in quote good standing he has not been in the club uh on several major issues right buck who previously said he would retire at the end of the year announced uh last week he's getting out of here now he said um w uh, on the 12th that he looks forward to staying involved with uh political process he told reporters afterwards that congress just keeps going downhill and i don't need to spend any uh, sp spend my time here. Now, what do you mean by downhill? What he means is that he and people like him are having less and less influ influence. And some of the silly stuff that gets happening, this back and forth with the impeachment thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's, and his influence is really tailing off. So Buck doubled down on that argument with the interview with CNN. Uh, Buck moves uh, up retirement and trashes Congress on the way out. He said, "He says this. It is the worst year of the nine years and three months that I have been in Congress. So maybe you should have only been in four years." Anyway, having talked to the former members, it's the worst year in forty or fifty years to be in Congress. Now, here's something else: his influence has dropped, and influence uh, from people like him have dropped. Well, they're not having a great time. And my deal is, here's the, here's the deal, um, Representative Buck. Being in Congress, even at the best of times, is hard. It should not be easy. It should never be easy. It should always be tough. It should always be um, combative. It should always be like that. Not in the way that we're doing it, but it should always be tough. Because it's a tough thing to make sure that you're you are protecting the the, the personal freedoms of an entire um, country or a citizenry. It is hard to make sure that we are protected as a nation from enemies foreign foreign and domestic. It is t it is tough business. It is tough that we don't all go go to, go to Washington and hold hands and sing kumbaya. It's tough. Now, you may not be cut out for what Congress needs to be. And I'm guessing you're a man of a certain age. Yeah, maybe it's better for you to just go on home to Colorado. Enjoy that Rocky Mountain High, if you know what I mean. All right. 
I just said that I don't think that Donald Trump is a, uh, a, a capital R Republican or a capital R conservative. I don't believe that. And this is why. Um, I got into all of this years ago, 30 plus years ago, over a singular issue. Abortion. The murder of children in utero for the convenience of, of, of people to throw off the responsibility of having, of having and raising children That we, that that it would it was okay in this country just to murder your child unconscionable. That's how I got in. To give you some backstory, and I am an absolutist, I guess. Um, in in the only way that you can be an absolutist, I guess. Don't say what you know because the question is what in the case of rape or incest. Well, what we know, I don't know science what we know is that that is such a small percentage of what we are calling um unwanted pregnancies there isn't any reason to make the rule based on such a small exception that's just dumb it's like saying murder should be okay because sometimes if someone breaks in your house, you may have to shoot their ass. But that should be, murder should be fine. Shooting people should be okay, right? What if they break into your house? The same argument. And it's the same level of stupidity. The same level of stupidity. Now, I'm saying all of this beforehand to give you some, some background on why I believe what I believe here. Trump is um, doing an interview, uh, a radio interview with, uh, with Sid and Friends. Uh, Sid and Friends in the morning. That, sh that, that got shown on um, WABC. Basically, what he said, because he's trying, because again, this is why he is, he's learned to be a politician and that's too bad, or a negotiator. He's trying to play both sides against the middle. He says that he's that he would back a nation a national fifteen week abortion ban. No abortions after fifteen weeks. What have we learned though? Yeah, wait, I am. Um, I guess I'll admit it. I watch a lot of YouTube, and my wife and I, um, my wife subscribes to a channel with this young lady that she watches and um most of the time i found what she's doing you know fairly interesting just in vlogs most of it's interesting interesting we're not really into all the makeup stuff but a lot of it's interesting um she has had uh last year she had a miscarriage her, and her she, she had uh the weight loss surgery and she was trying to have a baby and uh, she got pregnant and then they had, had a miscarriage and that's tragic absolutely tragic and uh, she is pregnant again. And uh, she just did a pregnancy uh, announcement and went back and showed all the times where she'd gone to the, uh, got, got the sonogram and saw, saw the baby, a little, pe you know, little, little peanut, uh, the heartbeat, heard the heartbeat, the whole idea. And she just crossed the 12 week threshold, 13 week threshold, threshold. So is, it, so is what's growing inside the woman a child at 13 weeks? Yes. So it's okay at that point to kill the child at 13 weeks? No, it's not. What's growing inside the woman is always a human being. It's never anything else. It's never anything else. At the moment, at the instant of conception, always a person. Always a person. Viable or not, always a person. 
always. So this arbitrary definition of 15 weeks, I can't do. He says, we're going to come up with a time. Maybe we could bring the country together on that issue. Trump said in the interview, the, the number now, uh, the number of weeks now, people are argue, agreeing that on 15, and I'm thinking in terms of that, and it'll come out to something like the where reasonable. This is like to this is like two wolves and a sheep deciding on what's for dinner. What's what's reasonable about about murdering a child? At 15 weeks. What what difference does that week make? At 14. Let's say they're 14 weeks and 3 days. Now what we also know is that. Trying to figure out how long someone's been pregnant. Is not an exact science right? That's what we always. That's, that's what we know. How do we know that? I don't know. Science. Uh, context. Facts. History nuance, all the stuff that we already know, right? Am I right? Am I, am I right or am I right? I'm right. Um, so this arbitrary 15 week period, that's supposed to bring people together. I'm not down with it. You know, he says this, everybody agrees. You've heard this for years. All the legal scholars on both sides agree. It's a state issue. It shouldn't be a federal issue. It's a state issue. He also has. So he's trying desperately to not piss me off. Too late, sir. I know who you are. You are a small R Republican and you are a small C conservative. Conservatives err on the side of life. Unfortunately, I know I don't have a choice in this coming election. For the first time in years. I did not vote. I did not vote in the Florida presidential primary, uh, preference uh, primary. Nothing but Republicans. Uh, the one Republican already had ha, already has enough delegates to win the nomination. I guess I could have gone in there and done that, but why? For what reason? So, so and Joe Biden is not a choice for me. And neither is Jill Stein or any or, or, or Cornell West. Not a choice for me. So I'm kind of stuck there. Now, supposedly, this guy is focused, laser focused on the issue of abortion. What he needs to be focused on is how we got elected last time. Be laser focused on immigration. And then actually make it happen. In any case, I got to get out of here. I've already made enough of you angry. So I got to get out of here and co co also make somebody else pissed off. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody. And for goodness sake, y'all take care of yourself. My name is Will Lawson. This is the Morning Report. Uh, We'll see you when we see you. Bye-bye now.